just going to ask, can we can we get that flag in so we don't have to turn our backs to everybody? Okay. Uh, first, we've got the consent agenda for today and the minutes of the October 29th, 2019 meeting to be approved. Is there a motion on uh, those items? Mr. Chairman, the minutes in the to be approved. I just have a correction under the discussion of the police comment. Uh, on the tax shift, this says that we voted the percentage of 120 percent. We voted a shift of 125 percent. Yeah, that's correct. Right. Right. There's yeah. a correction there to be made. So yeah, as they long recommended as the 120. We correct. The 125. That is right. correct, Mr. Right. Chairman. So I'm just asking for a correction to reflect the actual meeting, and I'll make the uh, motion to approve the consent agenda, including the minutes of regular session, selectmen's meeting of October 29, 2019, with the correction. And I'll second, second. that. Okay. Further discussion? Okay. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? That passes. A meeting mail, we do have a couple of items of meeting mail. They're not listed here. Should they be? Or? Mm -hmm. We've gotten them from the last meeting to this one from a couple of resident pieces. So those, those have been for info only. They're info only? Okay. All right. I think a couple of them should be this. Maybe we can get them on the agenda for next time. Just okay. we should at least allow the residents to know we received them. And okay. Are those in the back of our book? They were, they were previously distributed, either um, either mailed or emailed, so we, we got them. But you know, I, I think if we got them, we should discuss them. Okay. Or acknowledge, acknowledge receipt in a meeting. So there's been a couple of them recently. So. Or just email me which ones you yeah, I've got I've got them in my bag, so. Okay. Um, our five o'clock appointments to approve the transfer of annual liquor license from the blue from Rascals Inc. DBA Blue Lantern Cafe to Pinky's Realty Corp. DBA Blue Lantern Cafe. Nancy Johnson, manager. Um, this is a description of the property here, but we know the property. Um, the buyers are here. Did you any presentation or anything you wanted to say to us? Or? It's not required. You've submitted a complete package, but I'd like to give you the opportunity if you no. Um, we just wanted to know if it was possible if we could change the hours for a kitchen for, for, like, for Sunday. For, like, for, 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 Sunday. for Sunday. Could you submit something with the existing hours and what's proposed? I think part of what we got to do is let the world around you know that you're making a change in. Mm -hmm. what there is and what you, what you want to propose and what mm -hmm. you want to do so that anybody that wanted to comment on that kitchen seems like an easy one though I I really I don't I don't think anybody's gonna protest that is that appropriate or, or is I think the kitchen is ex uh, the existing hours are 8 a.m. to 2, 2 a.m. okay and she's just looking to open at 7 a.m. for breakfast instead of 8 a.m. but not change anything else mm -hmm. that wouldn't have anything to do with the ABCC it would just be it, it would be, just be the, the, discussion right, if the ABCC nothing. pretty much gives us the eight on Monday through yep. Friday, I mean Monday through Saturday, mm -hmm. and then 10 from Sunday, from Sunday right. on to whatever time on Sunday. They, they don't, don't want to change anything. Like that. that would be their discussion to Any issue they want to change. Because that's only liquor, because they need to liquor right. though, not food. Not food, right, right. You would have to just submit a letter of a change of the license to the board and then we could either deny or approve it. So okay. if you're only at, you're asking for an extra hour, it sounds like on Sundays only? Saturdays and Sundays, yeah. we're gonna serve breakfast yeah. So that doesn't sound like it. That no. doesn't sound like an issue. I, I think. Yeah. I, yeah. I just think you should request it in writing right. for the change. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yeah. Is that is that yeah. appropriate? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Just send a letter. Um, and I don't. That doesn't sound like an issue at all. Um, you want us to write the letter tonight and just? <laughs> <laughs> and we have to. Take I just don't want it to prolong yeah. anything. It's going to go on the agenda for another meeting. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. 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 Two weeks. Yeah. Which is yeah. As long as we approve the ABCC stuff tonight, that's, that's not okay. yeah. difficult. Exactly. Right. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Gaspar. So, Mr. Chairman, I, I I reviewed some of the application information that's here, and, and there seems to be some discrepancies with names, and I, I know the email addresses are wrong. They're still least spelled wrong in the application, so I don't know if this is the, the application that needs to go to ABCC, but if, if it is, you need to look at this and make sure the information is correct that's been put into this, these this is applications. This is the lands of Mary. So, I understand, but so oh, the right. applicant no, 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 no. contact here says Mary Cinerizio on the back side where the, the email address is wrong because um, on the back side it says your payment has been processed. So I'm looking at your payment confirmation information and it seems like Mary is 
Emsley, if I'm saying that correctly. Double surname, yes. So I just want to make yeah. sure that the names before this gets forward up to ABCC and you guys are held up any longer than what you should be, that yeah. everything is correct on the applications before it moves yeah. forward. Yeah. So yeah. There, there is some some difference in names, and I just want to make sure it doesn't reflect you folks when we submit okay. that application forward okay. to Appreciate ABCC. So can you just Looks please like review that with this letter? Okay. Just, no problem. Just, we'll just make sure that all the yep. information is correct with Miss Leonard tomorrow morning or later on after the meeting, whenever we're done. Absolutely. Um, just to make sure that the proper information is going up and the confusion doesn't happen out there. I'm trying to get it before it gets there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Gentlemen, other questions, comments? Yep. Uh, is there a motion? Make a motion to approve the transfer of an annual restaurant all liquor, all alcoholic liquor license from Rascals Inc., DBA Blue Lantern Cafe, Paul Hippolito Manager, to Pinky's Realty Trust, doing business as Blue Lantern Cafe, Nancy Johnson Manager, as presented. Sir, second. Second. For the discussion? Was that information correct? Okay, thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes. Congratulations. Congratulations. Good, Good luck. Just Good to luck. submit the letter on that proposed change of, uh, we can, yeah. we can deal with that at our next meeting, which is scheduled in two weeks. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Good luck. Thank you. Look forward to eating there. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Our 515 appointment is a uh, petition of Verizon, and Verizon actually yeah. couldn't be yeah. here tonight, so that's going to be tabled. Mm -hmm. Motion to the table, table, Mr. Chairman. Motion to table, second, second. Mr. Rush. That's second. table to a future date. That, that mutual convenience. I know we didn't notice requirements to the neighbors. There was one neighbor that was here, and I wasn't early on. Uh, we've got a five, we're very early on the uh, our next two appointments. Is um, oh Kevin is here. All right, uh, we've got a 5:30 meeting with the board of selectmen and the housing authority. We are 20 minutes early to that, so. You're both here with the housing authority. Is anybody yes. else coming? Or? Yes. Well, it's supposed to be here. I was told it was in 545. Okay. But we. Are you, are you members of the housing authority? I, don't even, I am. You are. Okay. All right. So, um, yeah, we're early. So, we're early. So, why don't we. Do you want to jump to. Uh, Mr. Young, Mr. Young, or Mr. Sure. Why don't we go no, with let's go, go with Mr. Young. Let's go with Mr. Young. No way. Henry was here for just now. Be presented. Mm -hmm. Mr. Bacon had a team. I should have time constraints, so I had asked last week that we oh, yeah. uh, that we um, go out of order. Okay. And, and have the uh, TAs. Uh, Mr. Dayton, how much time? How sure. much time do you have? Uh, you mean with the presentation? Yes. Only no, how much help? What time do you need to be Only about an hour and a half. <laughs> I'm only kidding. Uh, <laughs> I need to leave here no later than 6 30. Oh, see. So I got to be in Lakeville for 7 p.m. You, I don't. You can. All right, then let's go, let's go with Henry then. Let's, how, how much time is your presentation? Uh, 10 minutes. Okay, let's do that to you. Okay. I'll talk very quickly. Uh, good evening. My name is Henry Young, town planner. And on this uh, night of our first snow and projected uh, record cold temperatures, <laughs> uh, I'm going to talk to you about a uh, planning uh, grant opportunity, the subject of which is global warming. Um, I'm going to step over here. Specifically, the, uh, the grant. Lake Street? Lake Street. Mm -hmm. It looks like it. Specifically, the grant um, opportunity is referred to as the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program, or MVP program, I'll be uh, referring to it as. And the, the sort of the image captures the gist of what the grant opportunity is about, and that is with climate change occurring global warming, uh, we're going to expect to see um, radically uh, sh uh, radical shifts in our uh, climate, more severe storms, sea level rise, and as we do, we're going to see impacts to infrastructure like you see here. That's the gist of it. So it's a good, good image. But that's um, not Lake Street, is it? This is not. Not okay. It does look just like it, it does. <laughs> uh, the premise of the grant is. Um, centered around this data, which is kind of interesting to wrap your brain around. Uh, this is uh, the state of Massachusetts climate projections for the end of the century, so 2100. Uh, so the state is projecting that by 2100, uh, we're going to see an 18% increase in consecutive dry days and a 57% increase in days with greater than one inch of rainfall. What that means is longer periods of no rain, 
almost semi-drought conditions, but when it does rain, it's going to rain hard, much harder than before. Uh, about a net 7.3 um, inches additional annual rainfall. Temperature-wise, this is pretty interesting, uh, a 10.8 increase in average an annual temperatures. Uh, a 42% decrease in days uh, per year with minimum temperature below 32 degrees. So if you're talking to the Board of Health and they're talking about Lyme's disease and West Nile virus and you know the bugs aren't being killed by hard frosts, you know, this becomes significant. And a 1,280% increase in 90 degree days per year. So much, much warmer if these projections are true. What that, you know, that's not a Christian, that's not a Massachusetts phenomenon, that's a global phenomenon that we're seeing. And so their projection for sea level rise is a staggering four to 10, somewhere between four and 10.5 uh, feet along the Massachusetts coast. And that's gonna radically change what, you know. So that's, 80, that's an 80 year by the end of, that's 80 Correct, years. 80 years from now. Okay. That's a projection, Mr. Young, four to 10 and a half feet? Yes, what somewhere between, you yeah. know, four and 10 and a half feet. So if you just be, you know, if you look at the conservative side of this, a four still foot much. increase is <laughs> huge. Still, still too much. Right. So in general, extreme uh, weather increase in the frequency and magnitude of storms. So the state wants us to begin to think about this and think about what the impact would be on our municipal infrastructure uh, and how we might plan ahead for that. So, you know, we have to be thinking about impacts to things like culverts and bridges and any municipally owned uh, coastal structures that we have, any high hazard dams um, in the area, and also, you know, uh, infrastructure like uh, community housing that we may own, right? If we see a net increase of 10 degrees by the end of the century, projecting 5.4 by 2070, what does that mean in terms of heating and cooling of these buildings? So it's, you know, the impacts are not exactly where we might think they're going to be, to, you know, uh, so this planning process is, is a big brainstorming session to begin to unearth what the impacts might be. It's a two-step process. Uh, first, there's a uh, planning grant, which we will applying for now. As soon, I, as soon as I brief you, tomorrow morning I'm going to submit the grant uh, to the state. It's a rolling grant that goes on through uh, mid-January, and if we're awarded um, the grant, we get $15,000, which I'll ex expend it. Once you have the planning grant in place, then you can seek larger uh, funds uh, through the MVP action grants that actually pays for infrastructure improvements. But this is where we're at right now. If we, um, if we secure this uh, MVP grant, we'll go through a community planning process to understand climate change, what our vulnerabilities are, brainstorm that whole thing, identify what the priorities are, and get some order of magnitude costs to ready ourselves and, and be adaptive to this climate change. That is all rolled up into an MVP plan. That's going to be the outcome of, of this phase. With that MVP plan in hand, then again, we go to the next step and that is we go to the state and say, here's our plan, these are some items that we want to address, here's the price tag, and you, you know, try to secure funds that way. There's also a um, feedback loop to the state as, you know, as we go through our local MVP plan, we submit that information back to the state and they begin to get a better picture of what's happening statewide. So that's the benefit to them. So I expect that we'll uh, be awarded this grant. And uh, once we have uh, received funding, then we will procure a state certified MVP provider. There's a list of vendors who can come in and help facilitate um, this process. Uh, we will establish, actually we already have established, the core team of people who would be um, uh, working on this grant on a you know day by day, week by week basis. Those are primarily the department heads. Um, and then we will also seek to engage people in the community as well. So it's not just an in-house internal thing. Uh, we would want stakeholders from the community. And then again, uh, once that plan is completed, not only do we use it to secure funds to pay for infrastructure improvements, but that should also inform us on other plans like the master plan, which we're, you know is going to be one of our next steps as well. That will inform the, the master planning process as well. 
So, you know, once we have the uh, plan in place and then we go for these infrastructure improvements, this is an order of magnitude of how much money is out there. Last year, um, 26 million were requested, of which 12 million was awarded to 36 projects, which is ended up being an average of about $390,000 per project, some more, some less, okay? So out of 68 applied for projects, 36 received awards, 32 did not. And just as an example, Mr. Gasper, yes. Yeah. Uh, when you, when you said the thirty two do, do not, do they give you a list of the ones that were awarded? Yes, the I ones that were not awarded. Yes. So we have so we here in town when we're looking to do certain things, we can look at their list and say, well, they didn't get money for it. More than likely, we may not get money for it. So let's put something else on the list that might fit. Right. right. There's a strategy to what you asked for. Yeah, yes. Exactly. That is okay, correct. Thank you. So you know, just as an example, you know, we were, you can think about culverts, you can think about dams, you can think about, you know, um, seawalls and that kind of thing. But, you know, just down the, uh, the street here in Mattapoiset, they used funds to purchase 120 acres of, you know, coastal land to prohibit development. Because once, you know, when you develop in a coastal flood zone, you're creating, you know, some liabilities. So it's just an example of, you know, we don't know where this process is going to take us. And what we will be asking money for, and there's a strategy associated with that, but this is sort of an overview of where we're going. Any questions? Average grant award is how much? 390000 okay. and, and a fair number of projects are working. Almost 50%, right? Right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. That was the first year, 2019? Uh, second year. So, oh, that was the second year? So some of the people that may have went for a project grant money, they may have not looked at the list from the previous year and go, ah, we'll be smart about it. Yeah, we'll be a little bit smart. So do you have projects in mind, or is the consultant going to come in and help us identify? You know, uh, the project, or the uh, consultant will help us come in and identify what our vulnerabilities are and then what how that translates into projects. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so there is a strategy as to... You know what we would want to apply for there is you know uh, a match percentage as well so that can you know so we know you're into the things calculus likely to as well approve and things that are not likely to approve yeah we'll be able to tell by looking at the you know what was awarded in the past but they mandate that we have a consultant before we can even start this process Correct. you have to have an mvp consultant okay. from the state's approval list they help us develop the plan and we're so pretty certain we're going to get the initial fifteen thousand yes. dollars. So let's get it. All right. Mm -hmm. Do you need a vote or anything? That's it. Anything from us? Yeah. And if I can, um, some of the things um, when we looked at this grant. So again, we'll we'll apply for. We'll most likely get the um, the planning grant. We'll come up with a plan. Um, but one of the bigger items that um, could be on our list in our plan relates to sewer. We have a lot of sewer projects coming up. Um, and these, um, the the grant uh, money here for the actual grants, um, it has been used in the past, and I got confirmation from um, the representative there that it could be used to help with um, sewer projects. Um, also for MS4 permitting. So these are some bigger things that are coming up for us yeah. that are costly that this grant could help offset costs for. Correct. And the MS4 permitting is all related to stormwater, right? Yes. And isn't that around 50 grand for that permit? Um, we got a, an initial estimate from a consultant for services that would be 50,000. Um, I think anything relating to it will be expensive, um, but that cost could go up or down from there. So, right. so the last uh, issue, it would be appropriate to get a vote of support for this grant application for the record. Mm -hmm. Can I ask one more question? Yeah. Go yes. Before we get ourselves in bed with the MVP grant, is there any strings attached where once we apply for certain grants and once they provide funding for and we're approved for these things, are we are there strings attached to where we'll never get out of it? The I always look for that. Uh, and the only string that's attached is we have to uh, submit a letter every year. How are we doing on our plan? There's no mandate to perform on it. It's just a, an update to the state. Okay. Great. Mm -hmm. We had a motion to endorse the application for the fifteen thousand dollar grant. A second. I'll pass with the motion. Uh, make the motion. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah, so moved. Mr. Gasper. Uh, I'll yeah, second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye.
Thank you. So the board will be included in this uh, consulting kind of thing where we'll yes, be engaged with these folks that come into town and you know look at different things and the board can give our ideas uh, towards what like I mentioned Lake Street already to the Correct. board perhaps it's be good for that sewer projects so a couple mm -hmm. of things there right we will have essentially workshops which will be open to the public mm -hmm. uh, so there is an opportunity for whoever has an interest to participate and do you think because of our waterfront I know we don't own massive waterfront real estate but there are yeah. some properties along the river that could be impacted by sea level absolutely rise. I mean so you think that consultant would probably say let's go down and take a look and want to do a little like a little walkthrough or a golf cart ride down through that probably this this is gonna be a concern so you might have to engage with certain individuals along the, the river line right I expect that for instance we'll have a contour line which shows <coughs> elevations mm -hmm. and you can which is a bowl right the earth is a bowl and if the sea level is rising you'll be able to look at the contour line which constitutes say a minimum four you know foot sea level rise and see what the impact is and you can take that all the way out to a 10 foot sea level rise mm -hmm. and how that would impact sure because our, our water for our topography over there that's what i'm trying to make right is if, your, if your sea level rise is going up four feet it could be going in 20 or 30 that's feet. exactly so right that's something that they'd be looking at and it would affect some of our property owners down along the river yes it would. so we have to engage and notify them and let them know this is happening right just in case they're impacted by our actions i would guess we're going to make changes down there could affect them right right thank you thank you thank you, thank you. Thank you. You're um, I don't think the quicker item on the agenda is the Housing Authority, I believe, but I don't think we've got a quorum of your membership, do we? Say it again? What's that? You, we don't have a quorum of your membership yet, do we? We'll have a quorum. Yeah, we're not there yet, right? So we're going we're to jump We're gonna jump to Mr. Dakin and Mr. Dakin. <coughs> I know you'd be, you'd be quicker, so I was going to go to you if you, you were ready, but uh, let's go to Mr. Dakin and Mr. Dakin's presentation on the <coughs> town administrator uh, screening process. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, I have the honor and privilege of being elected the chairman of a group of diverse, unique, and talented civic-minded citizens selected by this board to screen for the town administrator position. And I'd like to take a few minutes to acknowledge some individuals for the benefit of our residents who are watching who contributed significantly to this effort. I'd like to start with Lisa Leonard and Rachel Charbonneau for their excellent support of the staff during the entire process. Thank you. Committee members, I'd like to recommend uh, a comment. Heather Sylvia, Council on Aging Director, she hosted the meetings at the Council on Aging, was the secretary, did an excellent job with the meeting minutes, and she provided water and snacks for all who attended. Pam Labonte, a town clerk, valuable assistance with logistics for everyone. Uh, for instance, candidate photos and question portfolios for all committee members. Jennifer Downing, school committee member. John Halcroft, former town clerk, finance committee and school committee member. John Roy, a teacher in the Acoustic School System with 24 years experience. And Tom DaCosta, who, as we all know, was the driving force behind our Veterans Memorial at Pope Park. Bob St. Jean, former selectman, current chair of the Finance Committee. And John Golda, a resident contractor and our community cable television technician. Further, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge the invaluable assistance of Mr. Kevin Pecos for his professional networking, his background, experience, and leadership in this endeavor. Now I'll get into the nuts and bolts of this. We met on five occasions from September 25 to November 6th. And on the first meeting, we received an overview of this process from Mr. Pecos. We reviewed the open meeting law, public records law, and the need to maintain confidentiality of all the applicants. Myself and Heather Sylvia were elected chairman and secretary, respectively. At the first meeting, we received 10 resumes and a matrix score sheet provided by Mr. Pecos 
the rank applicants for the preliminary interviews. Now, I don't know if you gentlemen have seen the score sheets, but some of the articles or items in there that we rated each applicant uh, on were years of experience as a town administrator, years of experience in government positions, whether the applicant had a bachelor's degree or a bachelor's and a master's degree or a master's degree in public administration. Further, there had to be demonstrated budget and finance experience, human resources and communications experience, collective bargaining experience. This is the big matrix. Demonstrated purchasing experience. And there was extra uh, recognition given to someone who was a Massachusetts certified public procurement officer. And it, uh, the far right of the matrix was a column entitled Other, that if any member felt any particular applicant deserved some credits that were not included in what I just mentioned, they were allowed to place it in that other category. The weighting of each category was then discussed, debated, and agreed upon. The format for the interviews was discussed and agreed upon. And at that point in time, Mr. Pecos provided a list of questions from prior interviews, and the committee decided to select three each, or instead devise their own questions for the interviews. That was our first meeting. <coughs> On October 16th, we interviewed our first two candidates and a second group of resumes was distributed and scored and forwarded to Mr. Pecos via email to compile. Now just so you know, when, when these uh, scorings were done, they were done independently. Each member of the steering committee did it independently and sent it independently to Mr. Pecos. So each one of us did not know what any other member of the committee, uh, how they were ranking. On October 21st, we interviewed two more candidates, and the third and final batch of resumes <coughs> was distributed and individually scored and again distributed to Mr. Pecos. And we had two more evenings of interviews, October 28th and November 6th. We interviewed two candidates at each meeting. Mr. Day, can, can I jump in with a question? Certainly. How, how many um, applications, might be the wrong word, how many expressions of interest, written expressions of interest? I was we just getting to that. Okay, yes. all right. And how many people were we interviewed? In summary, in in summary 23 right. resumes right. were received, and it reflected widespread response geographically as follows. Southeastern Mass had seven, seven responses. Western Mass, four. The North Shore, meaning north of Boston, mm -hmm. four. Cape Cod, two. And Metro Boston, one. And there were five out-of-state responses. One each from Maryland, Nevada, South Carolina, Florida, and Vermont. This comprised ten well-qualified town administrator applications, as well as some with municipal chief financial operators and planners, and they all had extensive municipal experience. Again, we used the resume scoring system to establish a point <coughs> cutoff factor. So, you know, 23, everyone ranked from 1 to 23. And on November 6th, the final calculations were con conducted by each committee member, independently again, in confidence, and given to Mr. Pecos to compile on a single <coughs> score sheet. So again, each member of the committee did not know how each other member was scoring uh, after all the interviews. After the scoring was uh, revealed among the committee, we readily achieved consensus as to the top three finalists and began some discussion to determine how many finalists we would present to you gentlemen. It was decided to submit the top five 
because Mr. Pecos noted that several of our finalists were also applying to other cities and towns and that we could lose one or more in this process. So we decided to submit five instead of three. We believe this group of five <coughs> represents extremely well-qualified municipal managers, each with substantial experience. We believe these top five of 23 represent an outstanding group of individuals and we're confident that whomever the board chooses, the citizens of the Cushnet will benefit greatly. Committee is extremely proud of its work and we're grateful to have been afforded the responsibility to assist the board and the town with this recruitment effort. We look forward to your deliberation and to its selection of one of these finalists to become the Kushnitz next town administrator. Thank you. Mr. Dakin, how many face-to-face -face interviews were there? How many people did you bring in? Eight. Eight, eight came in. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chairman. Yeah, go ahead, Mr. Kessler. So, Mr. Dakin, um, you know, great work. The whole committee, um, I got a lot of feedback on it, and I'm overwhelmed with all the positivity that I got out of every committee member. But you know, obviously you're not going to stand at that podium and thank yourself. So I would like to personally thank you for taking on the role of chairman um, and the responsibilities that come along with that and dedicating as much time and effort as you did to the process um, as all our other committee members did as well. Um, but being the chairman, you know that role is very difficult. Um, and I was pleased to know that you were announced the chairman. Um, you're a phenomenal individual. I, I'm, I'm very pleased that the committee was able to work together um, and come up with the, the final results of these five applicants, if that's what you're going to forward to us. I know Mr. Papers will talk, but, um, you know, again, thank you very much for the work that you've done and all the committee members have done, actually. Um, it, was, it, was, it was very telling when people spoke <coughs> to me about the process, how well it went and how well everybody worked together. Um, Thank it, goes you to show you, it goes to show you the sense of community here in the town of Krishna, right? So um, thank you again, Mr. Bacon. I can't, you know, it was, it was an excellent process. It was an excellent effort for all of you guys um, to put that effort in and spend that much time doing what you did for this board. So again, thank you. Thank you. It was a true team effort, and uh, hopefully it'll bear some good fruit. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you, Les. Mr. Papers, welcome. Thank you. Um, so the first thing I can tell you <coughs> is that, uh, yeah, the, the citizens of the Cushion and the board are very, very fortunate. This is an extraordinarily good committee to work with. Um, you know, when you come to a town and you don't know folks and you're going to do this sort of thing, you don't quite know what to expect. But I don't think, you know, I've been in municipal government for 42 years. I don't think I've seen a more cooperative, um, insightful group of people than the folks that did this. Um, <coughs> they asked a lot of probative questions. Uh, I scored all the resumes myself in private and then compared my scores, um, and I knew most of the applicants because I recruited a lot of them. Um, and I will tell you that the members of the committee very accurately scored, um, uh, scored all the resume candidates, and that's not an easy thing because sometimes you got to go looking, you know, for material either in the resume, the cover letter, or whatever. So they did a great job. Uh, they invited 10 folks, as Les told you, to come interview, and eight accepted, two with one didn't accept and one withdrew. Um, the great news is this committee has given you uh, five really excellent uh, people. Any one of these people, I'm quite convinced, could do a great job for you and for the citizens of, uh, of the Cushnet. So kudos to the committee, great, great effort. Uh, they worked incredibly smoothly together. Les did a great job as chair. Um, and the other members of the committee all performed top-notch, and it really is a credit to a cushion at uh, the good work that was done. So, <coughs> we have the names of the five candidates. Um, we, I have called them all, and they have all agreed to have their names be now made public, because finalists are public, as the uh, board is aware. But before I do that, Mr. Chairman and members of the board, um, I don't know if there's any discussion you'd like to have about the process or um, where you'd like to go at this point. We are ready, uh, I'm ready to give this part of the report and the packets to the board if, um, depending upon what you'd like to do right now. 
John, do you want to do you got anything to go? I, I, um, <clears throat> I would like to know for all the hard work that the committee has done, right? Um, I, I would like for you to lay out to the board, Mr. Pecos, the next, the legal process moving forward for us to take. Sure. Um, <clears throat> Attorney General's ruling on this subject has been pretty clear cut. Um, uh, what she said, <clears throat> and it's actually two AGs ago, that um, it says this is an interpretation of the open meeting law. And what she said was that the identities and the resumes of the semifinalists can remain confidential. Um, there was a great deal of discussion about this because candidates don't want their name necessarily out there <clears throat> and have citizens and their boards knowledgeable that they're looking, um, you know, if they're basically not going to be a viable candidate. So there was a bit of a compromise struck with the AG, and she ended up saying semi-finalist applicants, if you will, are confidential. Um, and that is the reason the board can't see the semi-finalists and why you use a screening committee and rely on the, uh, the good work of the screening committee, because they look at all the candidates, and then they decide who they want to interview, and then they present with you the finalists. The AG has further opined that the identities of the finalists are public. The minute you get these, these are public. So before we give them to you, we have to call the candidates and say, congratulations, you're a finalist. Um, Tuesday night, uh, your name potentially is going to be publicly revealed. Are you okay? And five out of five have said yes. I have seen situations where finalists say no um, because they don't have a good feel mm -hmm. uh, and they don't want to risk you know, having their name out there. But in this case, all five did. And so <clears throat> the process that the board, um, the board can consider any process you'd like. The only caveat, the only requirement is uh, the interviews that you conduct must be public. Um, resume verification, um, uh, background checks, um, reference checks, all that sort of thing. You know, I'll do that for you if you'd like. That's part of my responsibility to you if you'd like. I was you were going to say that. Happy to do it. Right. My suggestion <clears throat> to boards is always, um, I wouldn't bother doing that with all five folks. I would go through your interviews, select your candidate, and then prior to starting the contract negotiations, and I'm happy to help you with that as well, um, that's when we verify resumes and check references on just that one candidate. Questions, yep. so are we obligated to interview all five? No, nope. we no. Nope. So we could once these are given to you, yep. uh, the board can do whatever you'd like um, with them. The only caveat is whatever you do must be done in public. So if yep. you have a deliberation, you look at these, you look at the resumes, and you say, <clears throat> you know, we'd like to have some further discussion. We don't want to interview all five. We want to interview four or three or whatever. You're perfectly um, allowed to do that, but your discussion must be at a public meeting. I don't, I don't know what's in there, so I, I yeah. Just, I will tell just, you. No, that there I don't. Are, I'm just trying to understand. Um, as soon as you green light me, giving you the names, and you're done with process questions, I will tell you a quick, um, literally five second description of each of these candidates. And what you're going to see is that you've got an extraordinary depth of talent, um, and. We're really very fortunate. Um, you know, I went through this process with Kevin and uh, the other selectmen three odd years ago, mm -hmm. and we did not have this depth of talent, not even close. So we, we really, um, this committee has really hit it out of the park for you. They, they truly have. Oh, Mr. Gasper. Yeah. So before we talk about anything, I'm going to ask a question about what's inside the envelope. <laughs> you made a comment about background checks like like resume background checks but no no we haven't done I have read <coughs> no we haven't done have resumes in there for the five these, these are resumes yes these so are resumes know, and cover letters so the five resumes for the five screening committee the recommendation they've provided the board of selectmen with a resume yep and whatever <coughs> background they may have outside of just a resume cover letter or whatever else cover letters. Outside. so everything the screening committee seen we're going to see no you're not going to see all the resumes you no can. no just those no. five just the, oh yes Everything that the screening committee saw on these five people, yeah. you're getting a copy. That's that's my question. And yeah. some of them submitted, um, you know, additional ba uh, right. additional material sure. attached to their resumes and things. So yeah, okay. you're, you're going to see all the everything that they submitted. You you will get. So you're so 
everything's going to be done publicly, which is fine. Mm -hmm. um, we got five applicants. You all basically, Chairman asked the question on whether or not we have to do all five or not, and you said no, we can Up do whatever we want. So if the Board of Selectmen <coughs> will take those envelopes, we looked over the five candidates. We post a meeting, obviously, to discuss the five candidates. If we come, if we narrowed, like the screening committee narrowed it down from 23 applicants down to five, we could do the same. We could say we don't want to look at all five and interview all five. This is like he'll score <coughs> the top five, I'll score my, and if we end up with the same, let's say we all end up with the same top three, mm -hmm. we could just opt to do those three. You could. And bring them in and maybe do a couple questions each. Selectman can ask yeah, what a question. I'll, what I'll do for you is similar to what I, if you'd like, it's uh, similar to what I did for the screening committee. I'll generate a substantial list of questions. Um, these are questions I've actually accumulated over the years. Some that I've done, I actually picked up a few more questions from your screening committee. Um, <clears throat> and I'll send you all of them, it's 50 questions. And then my suggestion is you choose from those or make up your own. Mm -hmm. um, three or four questions because frankly in a one hour odd interview you're only going to get the three or four questions yeah um, <clears throat> typically the interview process is board members say hello you give the candidate five or ten minutes to give you the highlights and tell you about themselves that's just kind of as an adjunct remember the public hasn't necessarily seen these so letting the candidate tell you a little about themselves kind of tells the public who they are <clears throat> then the board goes into its questions um, There'll be two types of questions. There'll be kind of canned questions that come off the list. There'll also be questions you'll want to ask based on what you see in these resumes. Or in the case of the screening committee, some of them did some Googling work. You know, it's 2019, people Google now. So they went out and they did some work and then they saw some things and they asked the candidates, hey, tell us about this that we saw. So they might want to do that and develop some questions that don't immediately appear right off the resume. Candidates will answer the questions, and then I always recommend um, you give the candidate five, six, seven minutes <coughs> at the end to ask you questions um, and or summarize whatever they'd like you to know. Always a good thing to ask the candidates to ask you questions because that kind of gives you some measure about how well did they prepare for this and what do they know about the town already. Kind of tells you how serious their commitment is to the community. Mm -hmm. um, somebody who comes in here does the interview, doesn't do a lot of prep work, um, you know, you might want to wonder how deep their commitment is. Mm -hmm. People who are serious about wanting to do this job, they're going to do a lot of work before they come in here. They should. Mr. Pecos, so are we obligated to ask each candidate the same question? You and I. We're not. We okay. can go. It sometimes can boards. a different experience for every candidate. Yeah, sometimes boards and screening committee had core questions. Um, <clears throat> so each member had a question to ask and two backup questions. Um, they also tailored some of their questions to resumes and things they saw on the internet. Um, and some didn't ask their question. They skipped their question. But I would say for each candidate, 75% of the questions asked were the same questions asked of every candidate. We, we, ju we just um, went through the process of identifying and hiring a new police chief and that process under civil service was very structured, very regimented. And yeah, you did an our assessment hands were center. Little bit tied yep. as to how we manage that process. Yep. So that's sort of, of what our recent experience is, and I just want to make sure we're complying with the rules. Yeah, yeah that's a little different process. I actually sit on assessment center teams for some other okay. for some other companies, and um, that process is heavily regulated by um, uh, DPH and. Um, uh, it's a little different, but it's not completely dissimilar. I mean, you're at, you know, in that case, you've got the assessment center results gets in front of it, it's a scoring, and then you ask interview questions and right. uh, situation questions. This is probably going to be a little different. Um, I don't think you're probably going to give your candidates um, scenarios, but you might. You know, you might want to do that. Um, but usually for the town administrator, once it gets to this level, these people are all skilled in terms of knowing the job. Mm -hmm. Your screening committee's done great work. There's nobody in this pile who couldn't walk in tomorrow and be your new town administrator. So from a technical point of view, you don't need to explore, hey, have you ever done collective bargaining? These people yeah. have all done that. Right. Have you ever done grant writing? Yes, they've all done it. What you're really trying to determine is who fits with you, you the three selectmen, and who fits with the community. Because they're all people that can do the job, but it's a question of which of them can do it best. And that is a question which 
you know, is left to two levels of discernment of the screening committee, all of whom are prominent citizens from the community, did a great job trying to decide who fits. And now you as the elected representatives make the top final decision who fits. But that's the job, who fits. Not so much who can do it, they can all do it. Mr. Gasper, go. Would it be your recommendation um, to ask the same questions to the candidates? Because we did that kind of with the chief's positions to kind of make it equal to all candidates. So I, I mean, it's yeah, you're actually required to do it for an assessment. I did it process, in the last round. Yeah. I had my own five or seven questions mm -hmm. when we were in satellite remote locations, right? <clears throat> and and I asked the same five or seven questions because to yeah. be fair to everybody, it's it's you're asking the same questions. You're not asking somebody, you know, oh. Look, little lolly ball question over here and then you're asking this guy you're trying to give a fair assessment so to, to me it was nice to ask the same question to everybody and I scored them all every yeah. question I scored them and basically came up with you're going to have more time with each candidate than the screening committee had because they screen they had to screen a lot more people <coughs> so you're going to be able to ask more questions per board member so my suggestion is have two or three that you ask every candidate and then have a couple that are tailored to the specific candidate. Mm -hmm. Now, if you don't see anything in the resume or you don't see anything in the internet that causes you uh, pause, that causes you to ask a question to explore something, um, then you may want to ask the same five questions mm -hmm. you know, of each person. But you'll find these folks, you know. Um, yeah. I, want, I just want to ask the chairman, Mr. Chairman, when when you screened, Mr. Pecos has alluded to, has alluded to um, Googling candidates, and I know that's something that a lot of people do, so you can find out information. Did did your screening committee members of your team? He did say that some of them might may have done that. Did you do you feel that your screening committee has already done their fair share of that process? You mean the Googling <coughs> thing, the background kind of. I, where it was privately done by individuals, I really can't answer that. I know personally I didn't do it. I do know some members of the committee did do it. Okay. And it did raise some questions uh, okay. during the process that were asked at the meeting. Okay. What I found is uh, we had some uh, questions, you know, that were preconceived to ask of everyone. But what I found with me anyway, during the interview process, something comes up and it's gonna hit you and you're gonna to wanna to ask that. I, I had some uh, things that arose by reading the resume. Other resumes didn't. But sometimes during the process, something's gonna come up in your mind. The light goes on, I would suggest you ask the question. Okay. Town administrators work in a hazardous profession, you know, in terms of um, like ball players, ball man you know, baseball managers. You get fired for doing your job and you get fired for not doing your job. Mm -hmm. Almost invariably you get fired for doing your job. <laughs> most of them are pretty talented people. Mm -hmm. Far more than ever get fired for not doing their job. But it happens. And so uh, I'm not saying whether there's a candidate in here that's been uh, separated from service or not. But we have a saying in the town manager profession, if you've been working 20 or more years and you haven't been fired, you're probably not doing the job. Because town administrators are required to take risks on behalf of the community and make decisions that they know are going to make people upset. Um, but they have to put the community first. And so it's a bit of a high risk job. Um, so you might find a candidate who you know is currently working on a severance agreement um, or is in transition as we like to call it. It's a euphemism for got fired looking for my new job. Um, and you Google that and you find that and you might want to say, geez, I saw these headlines. The cautionary note I did with the committee is I said, look, <coughs> I, please don't Google these, pe these candidates. I, and then I said, and I know you're going to do it anyways. <laughs> so take what you read with a grain of salt. The reason is there is so much misinformation that gets put out in the press. Does anybody really believe in 2019 that the press is 100% accurate about anything anymore? I doubt it. So it is very much the case that what gets reported is often not accurate. And I told the screening committee a couple stories about myself. What got reported, what I was really doing, um, anecdotally to illustrate what often gets reported has got nothing to do with what's actually going on behind the scenes that the board and the manager are not allowed to talk about. Um, but people did do it, and so candidates were required to answer those tough questions. They know if they're working off a severance agreement that when they come in the interview, they're going to be asked about that. They know that, so they, they're prepared to tell you that. 
And shame on the board if you don't ask, because if you don't, you don't ask, the public is for sure looking up and wanting to know, you know, okay, this person got fired in another community. Why are you three gentlemen not asking about that? So you will, and that's fine. That's oh, fair, we hire that's fair game. And then that makes the paper. Yeah, I mean, that's fair game, and that's expected uh, to happen. And the candidates know that's going to happen. I'm not saying is because, frankly, I'm trying to think about these five folks. If anybody is in that category, and I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, whether they are or they aren't, there are things about them that you may, you know, discover looking uh, at their backgrounds on the Internet, and you may have questions about that. Right. Say, What's you this get, You get three envelopes, one for each of us. Isn't we it? do. Okay. So are you ready for the names? Sure. So just to clarify, that for the next step for the board is yep. we should we should figure out whether or not we want to bring in three or bring in all five. Right. Yes. And, and and then from there we can discuss. You know, <coughs> we have to discuss and say what questions we're going to ask. But I don't know if we want to publicly announce that or we just do that the day we bring these candidates in. Well, um, again, I mean, if a good word, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. submit them through Julie like we did last time. Yeah, yeah, I don't think you can yeah, do that. There may be a, no, maybe not. There may be an issue there. <laughs> You don't um, need to do that because he said you don't have to ask the same questions. So I can come up with my two questions. You come up with his two right. questions. Well, what I will do that. for you is I'll send you a list of 50 questions that are typical interview questions for town administrator type folks. Okay? Um, and then my suggestion is you don't want to pick the same five or six questions. You know, you don't want to have Dave take five of your questions because you think you're going to ask five and all of a sudden he goes first and he asks five questions and you said there were two questions. Yeah. So you send your questions back to me. I will screen them to make sure you're not asking the same and send them all back to you and say, okay, here's Kevin's five, here's the chairman's five, here's Dave's five questions. Mm -hmm. So you all know what everybody's going to ask. And then uh, ordinarily the process is the chairman starts with a different board member for each interview because Whoever starts may get another question or two in um, before, you know, as you go through the time limit you set to the process. You're also going to have follow-up questions. You know, someone's going to ask a question, candidate's going to answer it, and one of you is going to wonder about that answer, and you're going to say, well, I get a follow-up question. <coughs> so <coughs> those things will happen ad lib on the spot as you're going through. Right. So my suggestion in terms of the process is um, <coughs> I'll give you the five resumes tonight. Um, you folks take some time to read them and think about it. Come back to a meeting, and um, I'm going to say one thing about why speed is going to be important here. Come back as soon as you can and decide we're going to interview three or five or whatever it is you decide. <coughs> and then we pick some dates immediately to do those interviews. Um, meantime, while you're doing that, I'll send you the questions. You pick your, I'm going to suggest five because that's an easy number. Um, send them back to me, send them back to me, and then I'll put your five together with each of your names and send them back by email to you so you know who's going to ask what. Now that's, um, and then you're kind of ready to go. So at the next meeting, when you come back to decide of these five, you're going to interview all five, four, three, what? Um, you've already accomplished, your question list is done, you know who you're interviewing. All we got to do is pick a night and get on with it. Now, <clears throat> why is there a need for timely action? I know for a fact, because it's a small world, um, some of these folks are candidates elsewhere. A couple of them are finalists right now elsewhere. Um, you're going to lose them, um, very possibly. Now, <clears throat> we started later than most communities that are currently recruiting. Uh, current recruiting efforts going on, P-Town, uh, Hanson, um, Charlton, Ashburnham, and we started late. I mean, it's just natural. We started behind community. them, right? That's yeah, just, right. just they, right. It's just when they Brian had left and you began. It was no, you know, no um, uh, consequence of anything yeah, we did. We, just we started. Right the now, interestingly right. enough, the screening committee, due to their efficiency, you are now you have leapfrogged almost everybody else. So you are in uh, the applicant finalist interview stage. So you're ahead of everyone else. However, two of those communities have determined their finalist list. They just haven't announced it publicly yet. But it's going to go public fairly soon, and then they're going to start. So their we're doing that tonight. So some of these people um, are finalists right. elsewhere, and if you don't and move expeditiously, they've been announced elsewhere as well. Is what you're saying? Not yet. Nobody no, not has yet. announced yet. Okay. Um, yes, yeah, very weird. Yeah, I, okay. I, you were reading my thing. I, so. I know one community that picked their finalists last week. They're not going to announce until the 18th. 
Uh, and I, you know because you're involved in that process? No, because it's a small world. Okay. And um, I'm all over. People talk. <laughs> yeah. um, so could I suggest <clears throat> could I suggest that we receive the names tonight and maybe come back uh, come back here uh, next Tuesday night and decide whether we're going to inter uh, interview all five or three or whatever the number is? But does that make sense to you too? I'll come back sooner if that's if whatever yeah, or, wants to do. I mean, I don't. We don't have to do a Tuesday night at five o'clock no. meeting just because that's because yes. this is right. like, that's all the business we're taking up. We can do this whenever we want, right? We can do it at nine o'clock in the morning. We can do it at noon time if we want. But we, yeah, we it's just it's got to be a posted meeting, obviously. Right. 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 Mr. Right. Mr. Mr. Chairman, Mr. I'd Day. like to uh, add to what Mr. Fakov said. Time is of the essence here, and. Okay. The sooner you can move this process forward, the better, the better off you'll be. This is like we posted a meeting. Once the soon as we can. If you'd like to potentially look at all five, then it would be in your best interest to move sooner rather than later because you, you know, could lose one or two of them fairly quickly. Um, we could meet Friday morning if that works. I, I think that the board should be. Is, I mean, we have five resumes, guys. We got <coughs> Wednesday, Thursday, two days to basically blow through these resumes and say, make a decision on do we want to bring in all five or do we want to be bring in all three. Um, and that's pretty much all the meeting is going to be, but it has to be a public meeting, right? So this meeting can actually take 10 minutes, right? Yeah, right. And, and get Mr. Bakos moving. Um, get us the questions. Yeah, I'll have the yeah. questions out to you tomorrow. I mean, we may or may not use your questions, right? I mean, right. The board yeah, has so that, these are know. just suggested questions. questions. I look at your 50 right. questions and I have my own that I've already done before yeah. and I say, yeah, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use these two or yeah. three questions. I'll bring in some more. So if he starts asking a question that's somewhat related to mine, I'm going to move on to my next question. Yeah, I don't have to, you don't have to send them back to me and I'll compile them. As long as my suggestion is if you're going to go that way, then Make sure you've got maybe ten questions. Yeah, um, I know. I, that's what I'm saying. Know, so that if right. so that you're not overlapping with one another. So how, how much how much time do you think would be good to give the applicants for for response to the question? Like if we're going to ask a question, do we do we give them five minute time limit, ten minute time limit? I mean, we well, what we did, and it was the first time I've ever seen it done, and it was very effective. The committee decided they wanted to do about one hour interviews, and they decided that they. We'll be sure we're all and they also decided that they might do follow-up. They might bring candidates back to you know lower the number, but they decided the initial interview would be about an hour. So what Les did is he took the nine questions and he, if you do the math, um, he did five minutes per question, no more, um, <coughs> and that allowed five five or ten minutes for introduction, five or ten minutes at the back end for questions, and a couple of minutes for break in between. Mm -hmm. And so what Les did is he kept it moving along very very smoothly. And on a couple of times, he literally set a watch, and the candidate ran out of time, and he cut it off and said, "We're going to the next question." Right. Um, so That's what that is, right? So yeah. what that did? <laughs> Excuse me. What you'll find, okay, if if the interviewee knows the answer to the question, five minutes runs out quickly. If he or she doesn't know the answer to the question, to the you know the interview, <laughs> it's a, an eternity. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. I think to be fair, Mr. Chairman, I think we ought to, I mean, can we just, <coughs> we can say tonight that we only want to ask three questions, each selectman asks three questions, and we're, we're, if we happen to bring in five on Friday when we yep. decide whether there's three or five candidates, mm -hmm. I mean, we're, if we bring in five candidates, right, mm -hmm. um, giving them each, you know, three questions a piece, that's nine questions. That's a lot. Again, times that's five lot. minutes, that's the same process that the, the committee <coughs> went through, that's five hours we're here. Right. Right, and I don't want to be here for five hours. Well, well one, of the, nights, be be a, one nice. of the suggestions I'd make to you is, if you decide you want to interview all five candidates, and I, and I think you frankly have five awful good people right, here. Right. So if you're able to narrow it down just by looking at resumes, good luck. If, um, if we, and if we, that's but, what I'm trying to say. So if we do it in two two separate nights, I'd, yeah, I would say do do two nights, do th like three and two. Don't we got because you can't. Two seconds. If you do five, here's here's what's going to happen. The first one or two, you're going to forget who they are. We literally, um, and Pam was great. She went online and got pictures of all the candidates because we knew interviewing that many people that many weeks apart, we would forget people. Right. Um, 
And so all the members of the committee kept their own notes next to the picture so that they know, you know, they would remember to refer back. Mr. Pecos, if we, um, with, with the uh, police chief candidates, we submitted, we asked them to respond to some questions in writing. Is that typical? That's appropriate, too. That, that happens. Yep, absolutely. Yep. Could I uh, just, um, <coughs> could I suggest two things? That we meet, we meet Friday morning at 8 a.m., is that, um, and all having, have reviewed all five uh, candidates and decide at that time, and that's a quick meeting, I think, if we want to meet with all five. So that's a quick meeting. Uh, it'll be published as 8 o'clock Friday morning. Can you comply mm -hmm. with the 48 hour thing? I, yeah. I cannot okay. be here with you Friday morning, but yeah, that's, I don't know I think that was fine for this. Okay. That one's fine for this. We don't need you. And okay. then we will, um, after that, once we decide if we want to introduce <coughs> interview three or five, we'll get back to you with the names. You would coordinate. Yep. And we'll pick some we'll pick some dates as to as to our availability. I'd like to do it in two consecutive nights. Yeah, that's usually and the best. get everybody in as quickly as possible. And <clears throat> does that make sense? Are, are the, did you when the screening committee or you, Mr. Pecos, when you had these these um, folks in in the interviews, did you ask them if there was like a good time, um, or was no, it always a nighttime? Was I it always a nighttime thing? We picked uh, two nights initially, and then. Uh, we had three candidates that were at another couple nights, so every time I was calling candidates, I was giving them a couple nights. Um, and it, it was, it, I got, mean, if we it gets very complicated because somebody will say, I can't do this night, but I can't do this night, I can't do seven, I could do eight. And you, you know, you really lose your mind because you end up calling back somebody who's already booked and saying, I can't give you that, can you do this? I'll take care of that. Can you pre-screen these five candidates and call them up and say, hey, the board met on Friday, the board can discuss maybe the next week dates that we can meet? The minute you maybe give you me dates. Maybe you call them up and say, can you make this day? Can yes, you make I do this that day? for you. And, you yep. know, Two of them might say, oh, I can't do Tuesday night, but I can do the Wednesday night. Yes. And then the other three, you're going to have to try to force into the Tuesday night, right? I take care of that for you. Yep. Well, it's it's a, the minute you give me the dates. Said two, so I'll turn the day. Well, that's what I was asking. Do you think these candidates would be open to a day meeting? Oh, sure. Absolutely. Well, let me put you this way. Um, I worked in the business for 42 years. If I wanted a job and somebody said, I need you here Tuesday at noon, I'm going to be there Tuesday yeah, at noon. Yeah, bang out a sick day. Now, if... You know, my mother died, and I'm going to the funeral. Of course. I'm going to tell you, hey, I, I got a legitimate. That's part of what you have me do for you. So I'll tell you, hey, this person couldn't make it. They got a legitimate excuse. We're going to have to pick another day. But usually, you give me the dates that you want to meet and the times you want to start, and I'm going to assume, unless you tell me otherwise, an hour per candidate. Um, I'm going to call them up right away and start filling those slots for you. And if there's a problem with one of them, I'm going to get back to you. It'll probably take me a day or two to fill all the slots. I'll email you back, say, here's your schedule. This person couldn't do either of those dates. And we're going to have to pick a third date in order to accommodate that we'd person. We'd accommodate that. Mr. Did, did you have interviews on the weekend? I mean, on the Saturday? No, we couldn't get, with nine people, we couldn't get, it was the best we were able to do is to come up with one night each week for four weeks. Um, and so the problem was with the committee, not with the candidates. <coughs> yeah, and that actually it wasn't so a candidate. From my right. perspective, if we could do a Saturday, we could probably could we get them in on a Saturday? You could do a Saturday, you could probably do all five. Um, it's going to be a long day. I but fine. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't <laughs> think it's fair. The reason why I'm sitting here shaking my head saying no way, I don't think it's fair to the applicants. It's not. That we're going to be sitting there screening these folks. We're going to be tired. Yes. We're, we're, we're not going to be the yep. same guys that we were in if you hour do, one as we are in hour five. Right. And even if you win that fifth candidate, well, if you over. tell me you're doing five and I call them up and I say I got five slots, they're all yeah, going to want one, one yeah, slot. Yeah, it's going to go the last well. slot of the day. They're all going to want it because they need all to want to be respectful to the applicant. Yes, so I think you right. know three. A couple of nights, two. much better. To much do it better. that way. Okay. Yeah. Lus is waving his hand doing two nights because he knows he's been strong to the Because you know, quite frankly, if you're sitting there after the fourth or fifth interviewee, I mean. You're not even aware of what the hell's going on. Okay. <laughs> I mean, really? <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. It's disrespectful, right? So I, yes. think that I mean, you might, respect to you, them. Wanna, you, you might want to think, if you decide you're going to do all five, you might want to think about three nights, two each night, and the third night, one candidate, and then your deliberation following, okay. um, mm -hmm. you know, to pick the finalist. We, we'll figure that um, out. So that's not a bad process either, um, to go three nights, two, two. It, the way it worked out, it was just coincidence. Ten people invited, two bailed out. So instead of having a three-interview night, we ended up having 
four two interview nights and I think that worked that was done I think it worked great yeah I just don't I don't I don't want to let this process roll out three or four weeks down the road and those applicants are picked, somewhere uh, else if you pick two nights next week let's just say you do do you interview all five you pick two nights next week and one one night the following week you will not have lost anybody by then Okay, so we got a couple that. weeks. Yeah, because to know. the 18th, the one community that's closest to you will announce on the 18th, and then they'll start interviewing at some point. Um, to do the math, you should be fine next week and early the following week. Okay, so Friday the 18th, the week Friday excuse holidays. me, Friday the 15th is Friday at 8 a.m. We're going to meet. Okay. We'll get back to you with names. Okay. Yep. And we'll pick we'll pick some dates for interviews, and I'll communicate those dates to you, <coughs> and you'll get it done. Okay. Okay. Very good. So I announce the names. You Mr. Ready? Bakos, thank you again for coming back to oh, sure. and helping out. I'm loving being here with you board. guys. I'm hoping you get a good as, as good a result this time as you did last time. Want to announce the names? Go. Okay. Yeah. Your um, and these are not in any particular order. It's just how they are, uh, happen to be in the envelopes. Ron San Angelo. Um, of Two Ames Trail, Holland, Mass. He is currently the town administrator in Southbridge, Massachusetts. Uh, Jack Healy. Um, uh, Jack has have been town administrator all over the South Shore. Uh, 222 Purchase Street, Middleborough, Mass. Jack is currently sort of kind of retired. He's semi-retired, um, having recently uh, finished in Freetown as interim town administrator, turned into a two or three year deal uh, for Jack. And um, he is looking uh, to get back in uh, into the profession full time. Um, this one, I don't think you know this person, but I hear uh, through the grapevine she's an excellent candidate. Uh, Julie Hebert. Uh, oh, that, that's right, you do know Julie. Um, uh, the committee was very proud to select Julie as one of the uh, one of the finalists. And I think you all know Julie, so I won't elaborate uh, too much. But congratulations, Julie. Thank you. Um, <coughs> This really isn't fair because I get to have all the fun and you did all the work. <laughs> <laughs> no, we did. Okay. We um, Michael Mullen. Uh, Mike is a currently a selectman in Rockland and he is the Norfolk County Administrator. Now he is the Assistant County Administrator in this resume. I think he is right in the middle of going, um, uh, ascending to the County Administrator position from the Assistant position. So uh, we'll find out how that spins out and uh, get back to you on that. Um, and finally, John Stanbrook. Um, John uh, lives at 11 Opal Avenue, Middleborough, Mass with his family, and he is currently the assistant town administrator in Mansfield, Mass. So as you can tell, that is a pretty distinguished group of candidates that you've got. And um, again, uh, kudos to the committee. They've uh, produced a really outstanding uh, job for you. Some great people to choose from. And you will obviously notify, I think that you need, your communications now need to be severed from Ms. Hebert because she is a candidate. Yes. So well, I don't think it'd be good that you're talking to her to let the board know certain things. So maybe you right. do that through the chairman. So uh, she'll continue doing her job. <laughs> yeah, right. I'll continue doing my job directly talking to board members through the chair. Sure. Okay. Good. Sure. Okay. okay. But Julie will get the same information that everybody else will get. Um, in terms of dates and times as and far as candidates go, yeah. sure. Yep. So here's the packets, and uh, these are no longer confidential, obviously. Okay, these are much. public documents now. Thank you. Um, and to the extent the press or public might ask you uh, for copies of those, those you know, once presented to the board, those are all public documents, so they are disclosable to anybody who'd like them. So, again, it's been a pleasure, Mr. Chairman. I look forward Thank to you, uh, working with you to wrap it up, and again, uh, Kudos to your committee. They did a great job. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. All right, moving on. Well, we had a, we had a 5:30 joint meeting between the board of selectmen and housing authority. Do you have a quorum? Do you have a quorum of your committee? Yes. Again, I think you need to go into. You need to convene a meeting. Be in session. Favor. Right. Welcome, Mr. Chairman. Welcome, Steph. Would you want to move to the front, or are you open? Mr. Mr. Brown, yes. Mr. Luckman, Chairman, I would just like to say that um, I'm not sure of my place on the Housing Committee right now because I'm not an elected official. I'm appointed by the governor, 
and that seems to have had a lapse. So I'll I'll vote or whatever, but whatever determination uh, your board has you, for that. You were appointed, but not terminated. But you've not. I wasn't reappointed. terminated, but I wasn't reappointed this year. Okay. And it seems to be waiting on that right now. Yeah. They're still making me sign things and do things, but I'm. I just want to make sure the public knows I, I'm not sure of my place. Okay. All right. So, yeah. and that you know. Thank you. We still uh, we still have a quorum. Okay. So we, All right. Yeah, Mr. Racine, why don't you come up or bring your whole board up or however you want to do this? Yeah, Steve. I know there's a vacancy on the housing authority. Is there a candidate for that yes. position? Yes. 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 So what, I, what I would like to do is, uh, we'd like to have Ms. Uh, Stephanie there appointed on the, on the board. Okay. Uh, she's been wanting to serve uh, on the committee for quite a number of years, but she's been working too hard, and now she's she has time, so she wants to serve. And uh, we'd appreciate your vote. All right, Stephanie here. Okay. And has, has your committee voted? No, we're, we're meeting together, right? No, we're, we're meeting, meeting together. together. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this is to replace uh, Mr. Mulvey? Mr. Mulvey. Yes, Mr. Mulvey. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, and you're, a res you're re obviously a resident? Yeah, 43 no. years. Yeah. Affiliated, not affiliated with the housing authority? You said you wanted to do it for years? or No, I just wanted to do something in the town. Okay. She, would, she would have served on any committee. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's time. I retired from the courthouse after 25 years. I work for myself now. I still live in town. My parents still live in town. Okay. And, um... Andy here caught me one night and said, how about the house? Yeah, there's something for you to do. Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's how he is. He does that to people. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I think you need a majority of the votes from both committees. Is yes, that? They need to open their votes. Or open their meeting. Yeah, they did. I think they right, did that. They did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, I didn't hear. That was in the back. They did. Yep. They opened. Right. You opened. Motion second. All that stuff in the back. Right. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I thought I heard that. All right. So um, you've made a, you'd like to nominate her as what's your full name? I'm sorry. Didn't Stephanie Von Jess. Okay. Von Jess. No, I make a motion as a I like Stephanie. Uh, appoint us uh, Stephanie. Okay. Is there a second? Second. Second. It's a roll call. I, I believe it's a roll It's call. a roll call vote. Why All right. Roll, roll call vote. What do you like? Proceed. Yep. Brenda Seen's an aye. Andrew Gomes, aye. An aye. Sibel Souza, aye. Aye. David DeRoche, aye. Kevin Gaspar, aye. Roger Crawl and I, Mr. Brown. And, and if my vote does count, count counts, I'm in. And, and Robert, Brown, <laughs> Robert Brown's and I. All right. All right, if it counts. Well, thank Congratulations. You. Thank you for volunteering. Hard to find people interested in doing things sometimes. So appreciate it. Thank you. Thank thank you. Uh, thank you. Okay. Good luck. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> can we adjourn the meeting? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can adjourn your meeting. Yep. We can adjourn your meeting. Motion adjourned. Motion adjourned. Aye. Aye. Okay, thanks. Hi. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> All right, next up we've got the soil board permit approval. Do we have that? Mm -hmm. Has that been distributed? I don't see that in my package. Do we have any materials? I'm on the soil board, so I'm aware, I'm aware of what it is. Oh, yeah. <laughs> So let me just let me just go to my notes and I'll, I'll talk about this because I think it's important. Yeah, yeah, no, no. So, um, so this is this is the um, this is the permit for the uh, PJ Keating Quarry for their annual soil permit. This is for the year ended December 31st, 2019. So we are, like last year, we're, we're well behind in approving this permit. Um, and really uh, just trying to attach to the permit to, to make this process a little bit more formal and scientific um, to build some requirements in this, uh, in this permit that comply with all applicable laws and regulations. As you know, the quarry's been uh, been somewhat controversial, uh, more so the last two years, and it's it's attracted a lot of public attention with their plan to move the um, the asphalt plant up near the road. So the soil board 
I think largely in response to that is said, okay, you know, you, you can do that. It's in compliance with zoning and um, you can get a building permit to do that, but you know, the, the game's gonna change a little bit because you know, we, we learned that your neighbors are really not happy with the way you're running your business there. And um, it, it seems they are trying real hard to comply with, um, with the law to keep their neighbors happy, to, to sweep the street, to, to reduce dust emissions, to shut down operations when um, the wind is blowing, to you know, basically be a good neighbor. Mm -hmm. They've established a, they've established a um, they've established a telephone line where where neighbors can can call if they've got an issue. Um, management's changed there. The, the gentleman that was. Uh, Kevin Yukin, who was the, the lead guy there, has left PJ Keating doing something else. They they brought in a team of five to the soil board meeting, um, and you know one of the things that the soil board asked them was, you know, we need a similar to what we do with solar farms. We need a decommissioning plan for the for the for the quarry. What's it going to be mm -hmm. when it's no longer a quarry? And um, and we want a bond to back that. The soil board for too long has accepted a 20 year old bond that just you know we've asked to have that reviewed by the town's legal counsel and we've asked them to provide evidence that you know they moved it I think from eight hundred and eighty thousand dollars to a million you know give us evidence that a million dollars is enough money to shut down that quarry and I, I don't believe it's anywhere near enough money to shut down the quarry but um, so it's it's a work in process the the um, soil board Working with the Board of Health is trying to figure out a plan to bring on a second part-time health agent, and that individual's responsibility would be to largely monitor the quarry. Not exclusively, but largely monitor the quarry. Um, the, the, the fee for the permit is $16,000, mm -hmm. um, which has gone up from prior years, and you know we're trying to get the cost of this permit to help fund that position. So that position's not been created yet, but you know what you're going to see in this permit is a, is a lot of language. Um, we used our RN to help us understand what the appropriate laws are that 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 regulate the quarry. We've built a requirement that they're always operating in compliance with all of those laws into the soil board permit. So this is this has gotten a lot more um, a lot more formal than it used to be, mm -hmm. and we'll and we'll continue to evolve. We. Um, we want the quarry to operate in a cushion successfully, but we need them to be a good neighbor, and um, and I, I think that is happening. So, uh, so we're looking to approve the, the soil board has approved this permit. We're looking for the board of selectmen to approve this permit. Uh, the permit will expire December thirty first, twenty nineteen. The goal would be that yeah 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 the goal yep yeah, yeah you heard that date correctly. The goal <laughs> the goal would be to to get this. To get this on a cycle where they're, you know, they've got a good permit when they're operating. They're not going to shut down January one. That's clear. Yeah. But we really want to get them a permit, you know, well before November twelfth next year. Right. And get this, like, uh, you know, first quarter or first month. Yeah. Do we do soil permits every year? We've got two. We've got two yeah, in town. Two, we've got two in town. Two, 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 two. Yeah, just three Pico Pico. They still had one, I think, this past yeah, they year. Did. Uh, we're down to two now. Yeah, we only, only moved to Pico in the quarry. Yeah, I right. believe so. Well, the when did we problem. do this? I thought we did this so it was, it was on track. We do them earlier, but it doesn't come from us. It comes from the soil. It comes from the soil, but last year it was about this time. Last year it was very late. They give to us so what happens when this it might have been actually the 2018 actually the 2018 permit no, might have been approved in 2019. Can I ask a question? When this expires in oh, six weeks, we'll call it right to the end of the year. That's all this is good for. Correct. What are we? What are we? What are they operating on from January 1st on? Goodwill, I guess. No. I so why would we it. just make the renewal January 1st again then and get that back in place so they are operating under a, 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 a valid permit? We can't um, just keep leaving well, these windows. We, open. Well, we're trying. We're trying to change it. It's. 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 Um, yeah. I mean, the process has been. Oh, we're yeah. trying to. You know, this permit has changed dramatically from what it yeah, used to be. Yeah, I know. It's, it's been. And it's there's great a work. lot of. I mean, all of this stuff here. Conditions for the permit. All the references to the appropriate laws mm -hmm. that has just been added. So, you know, the goal is going to be again to get it done. Yeah. <laughs> get it done in the first quarter. Right. Part of it. We left the last meeting. Oh, good. Um, you know, we, we is the bond sufficient? We wanted Copeman and Page to review 
uh, to review the bond. I mean, we talked about there, there are some things, you know, people talk about the fact that, you know, PJ, there's a lot of it is urban legend, is what, what yeah, their operations. And, you know, we talked about the fact that there was a, there's a belief that PJ Keating can only do public work at night. They're unaware of that restriction. So the right. soil board was of the opinion that that was, that there's nothing in writing that says you can only operate, you can only do public work at night. So right. the soil board under the bylaw has the ability to say, you can't operate at night at all. Um, mm. So it's, it's, com it's complicated. Yeah. But you've, we, got, you've got to come a long way. We're you're trying to get, we're trying to get, we're trying to, Copeman Page has got to review the bond they've given us. Um, and, 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 they need to come back to us. I think we've got a date for the next solar board meeting. They need to come back to us with justification for why a million dollar bond is enough. And I, I don't believe a million dollar bond is enough. So a um, couple of things. So we're keeping this on a short leash. Mm -hmm. um, but I would I would suggest we renew the, the bond as, as uh, suggested by the uh, soil board and we'll keep uh, making it a little bit better every day. I make a motion to approve the PJ Keen soil board permit as presented. I'll second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? And that passes. Please. All right, back to the agenda. Uh, item three, we've got a citizen interest to be appointed to the Finance Committee. And I think they've got eight people on and... The eight people? No. no I think there are eight. There's eight. There's eight. There's nine. Oh, nine. Finance okay. Committee's okay. nine, yeah. Think it's seven. Has the Finance Committee met with the candidate Mr. St. Jean has met with him. Okay. Um, Mr. St. Jean was here earlier, but he Is the candidate here? I don't nope. think so. Nope. Okay, nope. I thought you were waving. Okay. <laughs> Mrs. St. Jean didn't You're waving. him, and he said it's not to you. He, he really liked what he had to say, and he said okay. he was going to attend the finance committee meeting before being appointed. Okay. So I think he. Yeah, I like to. I like to give the the, the I, when I went on the finance committee, they interviewed me, and it just seems to be something that's happened in the past. The finance committee pre screens the people we appoint. So, yeah. uh, so, so they're fine with it. Mm -hmm. Is, is I'm, I'm sorry. Who is the who is the candidate? His name is Ron Melbourne. I'm sorry, Ron Melbourne. I think I know Ron actually. I know. Um, is there a motion to uh, appoint Mr. Melbourne to the finance committee? Mr. Chairman, I make a motion to appoint Ron Melbourne to the finance committee for the three-year term ending in 2022, as presented. Sir, second. Second, yes. Further discussion. Just making sure the confirmation of the 2022 expir expiration is correct. I did check with Pam Lombardi and she said yes. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Mr. Melbourne, for stepping forward. All right, item four in the new business agreement between Town of Lakeville and Akushnet for the anim annual animal shelter. And this is a standard agreement we refresh every year. Any Even changes from prior years? Not, I've read it all through. No it's a standard changes. agreement we sign every year. It's the I same called thing. Ms. Tomlinson, Mr. Chairman, and, and she's confirmed okay that she's okay with it. Okay. She says yep, it's good to go. So I'll make a motion to approve the agreement between the Town of Lakeville and Akushnet for the use of the animal shelter as presented. And I'll second that motion. Second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. That passes. Item five under new business is approval of the memorandum for agreement for AFSCME Union Local 851 dispatchers and dispatchers and others, correct? Yes. So, mm -hmm. um, well, what's, I, a, what's a numbers? I, what's a numbers? Just this Everybody um, covered by the AFSCME Union. I asked that question. Yeah, AFSCME Union is town hall um, employees um, and the library. But this is just reference to dispatches, right? This, yeah, this is dispatchers, but it, the the um, memorandum of agreement is for the entire union. But it's it's because they fall on the RASME. Right, mm -hmm. but it's only making a change for the dispatchers, Correct. which is specified in here. Yes. You would just get me nervous there. So I was like, no, I didn't see any other stuff. Yeah, this, no, the I, language the language addresses everybody though. Yeah, so so the current contract, um, it does have some areas where it will specify there's a specific group that um, would have whatever condition. Um, but that's what we had to do in this um, MOA um, is 
add language to say specifically for dispatchers, they're taken out of this paragraph and now moved into okay. a different paragraph, okay. and, it, and it explains the So we're not extending the term of the contract? No. Okay. Nope. Is there a motion to approve the uh, MOA with AFSCME? Make a motion to approve the memorandum of agreement for the ASME Union Local 851 dispatches as presented. And a second. For the discussion? I'd just like to uh, commend uh, Selectman Dave DeRoche in his contract negotiations with the dispatches. He did a fabulous job along with Ms. Hebert. So, Nothing DeRoche. Yeah, well, yeah. I have to give uh, a lot of credit to Julie. Yeah. You know, we went in there and uh, we were able to come to an agreement right away. Yeah. You know, after just a few. Uh, Letters back and forth. Right. Excellent. Yeah. Not that well. Thank you very much. All in Thank favor? You, Aye. Aye. Great. Thank you. Uh, we've got a senior property tax deferral. Those materials were distributed. Motion to approve the assessment deferral as presented in accordance with Chapter 80, Section 138. Sir, second. Now second. 13B. 13B. Right. Now second. Mm -hmm. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? That passes. A town administrator's report. I have nothing. Here. Nothing. Yeah. Selectman announcements. Um, CNL uh, next meeting's not until way out two days before, and people on camera won't be able to see this. So I'd like to wish everybody from the Board of Selectmen a happy Thanksgiving and a safe Thanksgiving. Thank you. And we're meeting, we are meeting Friday. So this says our next meeting is Tuesday, November 26th. Mm -hmm. We're actually meeting Friday at 8 a.m. The next meeting after that is uh, Tuesday, November 26th. We are going into executive session tonight, correct? Yes. Okay, could I get a motion to go into executive session, please? So, oh, you got to well, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta read the, uh, but it's not on here. Yeah, I, 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 I've got it on the agenda. It's uh, on the okay. agenda. I'll, ma I'll make the motion. I'll make a motion to go into executive session under General Law 30A, Section 21A2 to conduct strategy right. sessions in preparation for negotiations with non-union personnel, police chief, the board will not return to public session. A roll call vote. Mr. DeRoche? Yes. Mr. Gasper? Yes. Mr. Cabral is a yes, I'll, and we will not return to regular session. Correct. Uh, is there a motion to adjourn our regular meeting? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.